test out the Baumarag SX82. Um, I finally got to finally finish the weeding that I had. Uh, Ten days of weeding, no joke. Oh, that was, yeah. Uh, I was going to take a picture of it, show you just how, how many weeds I'd actually removed, but I don't want to have, I don't want to remember that. <laughs> I don't want to have any memory of that. Uh, so I tested out the Baumarag SX82 on that rotten um, evergreen cassia. I originally had it uh, just before Cyclone Yasi, I had it cut down to the gutters and um, I really should have just had him take the whole thing away because it wouldn't have cost that much more but uh, for whatever reason I don't know I didn't. Um, so but it was really as you'll see it's it was yeah very sick very very sick uh, really bad rot uh, fungal rot um, I th I was originally going to chunk it out, but you know, I haven't got the real the proper. I didn't want to be mucking around up there with a with a heavy, and it is a heavy chainsaw. So yeah, I didn't want to be doing that. So I just I decided I had a look, really good look at it, and I decided yep, yeah, it's going to go that way. And I'll be honest, I. I did film. Well, I did have the camera pointing at me cutting it, cutting it down, but I forgot to press play because I was, I was um, overtaken by other thoughts. Uh, so you didn't see me cutting it down. But I'll be honest, I did screw up. I uh, cut the notch too big. The the front and rear cut didn't line up. Uh, but luckily, um, we did tie it up so that it wouldn't swing any which way because there's a fence line right next to the fence line so I had it go diagonally and it actually did go exactly where I where I wanted it to go whether that's luck or what but it went where I wanted it to go where I thought it would want to go you know don't fight it let it go where it wants to go and it actually did go that way so great um, that that's an evergreen cassia a very hard wood um, it did sort of struggle a little bit through it, but it's not tuned properly, you know. I've got to wait till it's broken in and then give it a good old tune and whatnot. But, um, so that's that. How did it, how did the, 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 the SX82 go? Yeah, it's going fine. You know, starts first pop, no problems. It's great. Um, you just got to remember to use the decomp, <laughs> which I didn't at the start and go, bloody hell. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Until I found where the decomp was. Um, it wasn't spraying enough oil, I had to turn the oiler up, so yeah, all that. Um, now, what else? Um, so, I've, as you can see, the table's a mess because um, I've got all the parts for the for the, G, uh, for the G660 kit build. Um, uh, that other one that's complete that I'm going to use for milling had the wraparound handle on it which you don't need that for milling so i've actually swapped them over i'm going to have this wraparound handle on the um western wrap handle on the, on this kit build because this is going to be my felling saw and that's the other one's going to be my um my uh, what's it called my my milling saw and then i'll have the sx82 as my bucking saw so yeah i'll have everything there now um, so I've been getting a heap of goodies. Um, I've, I've sort of started to do this, uh, just cleaning everything up, just making sure everything's clean, that all the holes are clean, that, that the seals are in place properly, that um, I will get a tap, I will get taps and go through all the holes with the taps just to make sure. Um, what else? Yeah. Uh, I just want to make sure all that's squared away. Uh, there, there was a fair bit of corrosion in the exposed aluminium parts, but I've had to sort of um, sand that off and that just keep that corrosion away 
Um, so I can do a few things like I, I've the the what's it called the crankcase assembly tool is on its way from Canada. So I've got to wait for that, but I can install a heap of stuff in the two sides, you know, all the, all the gizmos. Um, but anyway, I, a while, probably about two months ago, I got this knife. It is the the uh, what's it called? The Ontario Rat One uh, or Rat Two? Sorry, this is the Ontario Rat Two, and this one has got the Randall's um, tactical training, tactical adventure training um, logo on it. It's, it's This is the D2. Uh, I, I don't want, you know, um, I was eight. And I've just, I haven't done, really done any work with, with this one. I've just, I just stropped it then. You know, it's, uh, they come super sharp out of the factory. The quality of these knives for how much they cost is sort of a bit hard to believe. Um, when they're in, uh, when they're in the, the uh, perfectly centered inside, but when you flick it out, um, it's not 100% dead straight, which doesn't really worry me. No big deal. So that's the Rat 2. So I was just so impressed with that, with the price and the quality and the build, that I got the Rat 1, which is its bigger cousin. So, rat one, rat two. Um, now, so the rat two, I have not cut anything with. I just gave a bit of a strop just then. So, super sharp. They come super sharp straight out of the factory. You don't need to sharpen them at all. Um, in my, like Nick Shabazz reckoned that these were some of the best value knives that you could buy and I have to concur with him. Nick knows what he's talking about. If, uh, if you've never seen his channel, he pretty much shows how to disassemble, maintain, review, it, all of it. He does all of it on his channel. It's, he's called Nick Shabazz, S-H-A-B-A-Z. And he's got a real full bore New York accent, like, Real full born New York accent in Brooklyn or something, I don't know, New Jersey. Um, so this is the Rat 1 and a little bit stiff because it's brand new. Um, again, oh, like there's no sharp hair. There's, the, the, uh, the spine on this is so square. It's not like, I'm not cutting myself, but it is really square. So yeah, watch that. Um, again, Rat 1 and Rat 2, in my opinion, I don't, yeah, that's, that's the interesting, this, the, the Rat uh, 1 does not have the Randall's Adventure Training on it. It's just got the, um, the OKC logo on it, so interesting. Um, they're both, both of them D2. I've got D2 steel, not Oz8. Um, uh, some people say, oh, D2, you know, it's, it's not as tough as Oz8 and... Uh, Look, look, <laughs> don't go batoning these no, things. No, 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 no. But uh, I was just saying that um, both of these are in D2, D2 steel, which is tool steel. It's not as tough as Oz8, but it keeps an edge for a lot longer. So it's a harder steel, but it's not as tough. So, but at the end of the day, when you're talking pocket knives, you do not need tough steel. One that keeps a really good edge is Perfectly fine because you are not going to be batoning with the friggin' things. Don't baton folding pocket knives, which, uh, yeah. I just recently saw, um, who was it? <laughs> Julius on uh, Smooth Gefixed. If you've not seen their channel, their channel's a couple of um, guys from the Netherlands. One guy lives in Ireland and he's got a full bore Irish accent. You, wouldn't, you couldn't tell that he was... Um, a little bit, you can. His his Dutch accent is just a little bit there. That's um, Dylan, and Julius, who's about I don't know how tall. He's about seven foot tall or something, man. Um, yeah, so the, they're big, big outdoor bushcrafting guys, and uh, <laughs> they were doing this challenge, one tool challenge, and or two tools or whatever. And and um, Julius had you know a pocket knife about that big, 
and he was trying to baton. Uh, he, he gave up because it was a stupid thing to try in the first place. But so don't don't go batoning pocket knives. That's just stupid. That's that's really stupid. Um, so that's about it. Now I've got a whole heap of other goodies that that have turned up chains and that because I do want to try, try what I'm going to do with um, the SX82 is that I've got a um, a 30 inch Samura uh, bar and I've got uh, two or three chains for it and what I'm going to do is I'm going to, just going to test out for myself because I've seen so much stuff already on so many channels about it. I want to test it myself and actually time it, cutting, with that stock full house chain. Full house, for those that don't are unaware, it, there's, a, there's a, a cutting tooth after every link um, opposed. And, uh, and then you've got a skip chain, which has got one tooth or more missing, so that it's got less teeth on it. And then I also, and then I want to do this, this square grind on the teeth. Test that out because <laughs> I bought a saw, I bought a, um, a file. Well, I bought two files. I bought, if, if you're looking to do square grinding here in Australia anyway, and um, you go to a steel dealer, don't ask them for triangular files. Because I've got two, I'm thinking, you know, thinking, well, it's a steel dealer. They're triangular files. Steel triangular files are going to be for the chains. Nah, they're just triangular files. Uh, wrong size completely. But I did get one that got sent to me from uh, one of the online mobs here in Australia. The, the proper file. So I'm going to have a go at that because I really want to see what, what happens with that. So um, that's pretty much it. I've just, um, I've got to go and help a friend. Uh, he's not sure if he's mounted his scope properly on his rifle, so I'm going to go and check it out. He wants me to check it. He just wants to show it off. Good on him. You know, it's a really nice. He's got a Lithgow LA-101, which is a sweet gun. Um, so anyway, uh, next you'll see the footage of, you'll see that little bit of, well, I'll put, I'll put that footage at the start. Okay, I'll put that footage at the start, so uh, until then, see you later.